Hey guys, Austin here with the post-game debrief or post-game reaction, if you guys want to refer to it that way. Uh, let's jump right into it. Lots to talk about in this game. First period, Dylan Holloway was mentioned as a late scratch for the Oilers, some kind of illness, so Sam Gagne drew into the lineup. Not that it really mattered. Gagne only ended up playing about six minutes tonight. Calvin Pickard gets the start, and uh, Oilers fans uh, with Sportsnet Plus, we were forced to watch the Bruins and Kings overtime, so we missed about eight minutes of the first period, and it sounds like Edmonton played pretty good during that first eight minutes. I haven't had a chance to go back and watch it yet. Um, finally got the Oilers broadcast feed and then it went straight to a commercial. So I was already starting off the, the game very happy. Uh, Fogel was put with McDra uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl briefly. I thought Corey Perry was going to stick on that line, but I guess a couple, there was a couple shifts throughout the game where other guys were getting an opportunity. I think that's Chris Knobloch's way of trying to get some guys going. Uh, it has not worked other than for Corey Perry getting some goals. Uh, power play uh, for the Oilers. It was a late call by the ref. McDavid was high sticked. Uh, the power play generated nothing. They were 0 for 1 at that point in the game. Perry then had a good chance that was saved by Jake Ottinger. I wrote that he looks pretty good with Dreisaitl and McDavid, so don't be surprised to see Corey Perry stay on that top line for uh, at least, a. would probably say, a few more games at minimum unless a trade is made and we bring someone else in. Cody CC then randomly iced the puck. It didn't lead to any trouble, but I did want to make a note of that because I just thought it was a really strange icing. He just like a high lob from way behind the red line. Didn't really know what he was doing. Uh, McDavid then was set up by Connor Brown. He had a wide open net and he hit the goal post and you will not see McDavid miss opportunities like that very often. And uh, I ended up tweeting out that McDavid did not score that goal because Connor Brown was on the ice and Connor Brown was cursed. That's kind of the play that I was going on there. Uh, Janmark and Fogel were caught in a long shift. Dallas got pressure at the end of the period. Brett Kulak took a penalty. Stars go on the power play. And that was the end of one. The score was 0-0. The shots were 7-6 for the Oilers. But the expected goals were 0.5 to 0.2 in favor of Edmonton. It was a good period. Dallas had no real good looks or opportunities until the very end of the period. And they also drew that power play at the end as well. But overall, I was happy with Edmonton's play in that first period, just in general. Second period, different story. This, this was a crazy period. Tons of offense, tons of back and forth chances, lots of defensive lapses, and a penalty kill that continues to struggle for Edmonton. Dallas is plus 22 goal differential in the second period this season. Edmonton is a minus seven goal differential in the second period over their last three games. Uh, Edmonton penalty kill for the first minute and 23 seconds. Calvin Pickard made an early save on Miro Haskinen, but then Marchment scores later on the power play. It was one nothing stars. Um, Janmark dove. Like, I, I'm not sure what was going on there on that on that penalty kill with Yanmark, he was the only he was the only player back on the penalty kill. So one, where are your defensemen? Uh, two, there was a shot and it was a rebound that kicked way out over to Marchment, and then there wasn't any chance for Pickard after the rebound to get reset in time to stop it. But Yanmark, instead of taking the pass or the shot or something, he just kind of dove head first into the ice. Uh, it's a really funny replay. You guys should go back and watch it if you haven't seen it since it happened. I don't know what Yanmark was doing. Pretty goofy stuff. Uh, I want. I made note of that because I thought it was really funny. But not too long after Dallas scored on their power play. Evan Bouchard tied the game with his 13th of the season, a snipe into the top right corner. Yanmark then shoots the puck into the bench on the next shift, and I was just very confused at how Yanmark was playing hockey today. That guy, he... Uh, I you can defend why he's in the lineup sometimes, but I can also be just as confused as to why he's in the lineup sometimes. Uh, Dallas then makes it 2-1. It was Harley's goal. Uh, the fourth line did not look very good on that. Uh, Connor Brown, he just watched Harley just kind of skate in front of him get to the puck, shoot it. Uh, it squeaked through Pickard. Again, you, you might want Pickard to save that one, and I will talk about Pickard tomorrow because I did see a lot of Oilers fans going after Calvin Pickard in today's game. Wasn't a big fan of that. I thought Pickard played fine. He played as well as a backup should play. He gave us a chance to win, and that's all you can ask for sometimes. But in any case, 2-1 Dallas here. Um, and then Corey Perry, he ties the game from McDavid. It was a very nice tip-in goal for uh, Corey Perry. I like that he just drives the net. Uh, he's like a Hyman. He's like a Ryan Smith. He just he, he, he just drives the crease, and then he drives his opponent's mental as well. I love to see it. Uh, it was a really fast-paced second period in terms of the pace of play. Both teams just skating. Like, that was a fast period, man. Like... I know the Oilers, they have some speedsters. I didn't realize how fast Dallas was, and my webcam is, like, glitching out. I do apologize that if that continues during the video, at least you can just listen to the audio if, if the webcam keeps cutting like that. There's nothing I can do. I don't know why my webcam is doing that. 
Uh, stars were called for too many men. And then the Oilers were also got a five on three for a minute and 43 seconds. They did not convert. They did not even get a shot on goal. Leon Dreisaitl did hit the post though, but that's the only real look they had on that five on three. That was putrid. Power play was over three at that point in the game. Hyman was then high sticked with no call. And then Corey Perry was called for holding about 30 seconds later. We love NHL officiating. We love that consistency. Derek Ryan, though, don't worry. He scored shorthanded off the two-on-one conversion with Ryan Nugent Hopkins making a nice pass. Now, Derek Ryan didn't get all on his shot, but he did sneak it through. So it's nice to see Derek Ryan score a goal. Um, Brown then went out onto the penalty kill. He hadn't seen a shift since that second goal for Dallas. He jumps onto the ice for the penalty kill after Empton takes the lead and Dallas immediately scores. And that is on Connor Brown's side of the ice again. Now, in this situation, uh, you would like Pickard to be able to hold on to that one. Uh, but Dayarnay was late reacting to clear the crease after the puck squeaked under uh, Pickard's arm. Game tied 3 3. Dallas also will begin the third period with a power play again. At the end of two, it was 3 3. Shots were 24 17 in favor of Dallas. The expected goal is 2.5 to 2.40 in favor of Edmonton. Third period, very stingy. Complete opposite of the second period. Oilers make the kill on the penalty, so they finish one for three on the kill tonight. Dayarnay was very physical. He had three huge hits in the third period. Oilers had only two shots halfway through the third, but it's not like Dallas was producing very much offense either. Uh, Connor Brown then got a shift with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, and I was very confused about that. Now, I understand Chris Knobloch. He's just trying to get some guys going, but a guy like Connor Brown, keep him away from those guys. Please keep him away from the top six. Just keep him off the ice. Honestly, at this point, keep Connor Brown off the ice. <laughs> Corey Perry was back with the top line not long after, though. It was a very stingy third period for both teams, and then Evan Bouchard, with about 20 seconds left, made a nice move at the blue line, took a good shot, um, but that was it for the, for the third. Not a whole lot happening. Tied 3-3 heading to overtime. Shots were 27-23 in favor of Dallas. The expected goals 3.0 to 2.6 in favor of Edmonton. Now in overtime, Dreisaitl early makes a nice toe drag into the middle of the ice, draws a hooking penalty. He wins the draw to Evan Bouchard, who rifles it home to win it for Edmonton. 4-3 in overtime. Now in my pregame prediction, I had predicted Dallas to win 5-4 in overtime. Uh, Edmonton ended up winning 4-3 in overtime, so it was, a, it was a close prediction. I predicted it was going overtime, I guess, just not as high scoring as I thought. Uh, final 4-3 Edmonton shots 27 24 Dallas. The expected goals today were 3.25 to 2.55 in favor of Edmonton. And my personal three stars of the game third star, Leon Dreisaitl, second star, Corey Perry, and my first star, of course, Evan Bouchard with the two goals. He has 14 on the season now. Love to see it. Now, I do have some extra stats on the screen that you guys can kind of take a look at. And we're also going to take a look at Money Puck, the expected goals in all situations today. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll down. We can look at the expected goals at five on five for our forward lines. Um, our weak link here, Gagne, Ryan Brown, they did not have a very good game, but they also didn't get a whole lot of shifts together as well. And then if we want to look at the time on ice, Evan Bouchard led the way with 23 32 with two goals. Connor McDavid is next, then Dry Seidel. And then when we look at the bottom, Sam Gagne played a very paltry 638. A little unfortunate. I'd like to see Sam Gagne get more shifts. And I'd also like to see him play with guys that aren't Derek Ryan and Connor brown um but overall happy with the win what did you guys think about the game today make sure you let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section below i have so much to talk about for tomorrow's day after episode so keep an eye out for that tomorrow morning and as always if you like the video make sure you hit like if you really liked it make sure you hit subscribe make sure you hit that bell make sure notifications are turned on so you never miss an upload or a live stream and i will see you guys soon enjoy the rest of your saturday take care everyone